Let's take a look at hypothesis testing. You may have heard of the term hypothesis in a science or a biology course before. A hypothesis is an idea or a claim you have about something. I'm going to take a look at my average time per mile. There I am cooking up a hill. Not really fond of hills. So let's take a look at how do we create an idea about my average time and how do we test that statistically to see if my idea is supported or not. I'm going to take a look at some data and decide if it's safe to say my average time per mile is the same as or different than 8 minutes and 30 seconds per mile. So we have a snapshot of data over on the left, and I want to determine, is it safe to say it's approximately 8.5 minutes per mile, or 8 minutes and 30 seconds, or not? Now remember, I'm working with a small sample of data, or just over 10 miles of running time, and that is definitely not the entire population. So the idea behind a hypothesis test is to determine is the difference between my actual time, 8.34, and my claimed time, 8.30, small enough that it could just be a fluke or chance, or is it great enough that the claim is not correct? What's going on? In order to determine this, we're going to use a four-step hypothesis process. Step one is state the hypothesis. Each hypothesis has two portions. We'll talk about those. Step two, we're going to set a criteria for decision and a level of significance. Collect some data and compute the sample statistics in step three. And we're going to make a final decision in step four. Now remember, a hypothesis test just tells me if my claim is likely to be true based on the data or not likely to be true. We stay away from the word prove because we are just working with a sample. So you do not want to get in the habit of saying it is proven to be true. A different sample could show something different. Step one is to state the hypothesis. There are two hypothesis statements for every test. The null, or what we think of as the baseline, no change or relationship, and the alternative or the specific case or claim. An alternative hypothesis can be two-tailed, that means the difference could be less than or greater than, or one-tailed, which is more specific. Let's take a look at my specific case with my claim per mile. In this case, we're going to take a look at determining if my average is different than 8 minutes and 30 seconds per mile. Now in this case, this is a two-tailed test because I'm not being specific. Is the difference greater than or is it less? So I'm actually going to write my alternative hypothesis first. The alternative hypothesis is denoted with an H sub 1 or a 1 below. And this is the mean is different than 8.30. And I'm going to use the decimal, 30 seconds is half a minute, or 8.5 minutes per mile. The null hypothesis deals with equality. In the null hypothesis, I'm going to put it's equal to 8.5. This is what we call a two-tailed test, because I am not being specific if I think my average is greater than or less than, just that it is not equal to. We could also run a one-tailed test. In that case, I would be specific. I might think that I'm faster than 830, and I state my alternative hypothesis first, so my average would be less than 8.5. I find it easier to state the alternative first because the null is then just the opposite. If I'm not less than 8.5, I have to be greater than or equal to 8.5 minutes a mile. Huh? So the wording of the actual question in the research problem will indicate either a less than or greater than situation in which you have a specific case or one-tailed hypothesis. In the absence of a specific case, we default to a two-tailed test. 
then we're going to set the criteria for decision. These are our cutoff points or what we are going to deem appropriate for supporting the null and the alternative hypothesis. Most hypothesis tests we are going to work with deal with a level of significance of 5% or 0 0.05. When we're working with Z tests, and this is Z tests only, that results in critical values for a two-tailed test of negative 1.96 and 1.96. If we are running a one-tailed test, we have a critical value of 1.65 for a right-tailed test and negative 1.65 for a left-tailed test. Right-tailed tests have an alternative hypothesis of greater than Left-tailed tests have an alternative hypothesis of less than. We will come back to those critical values. In order to use the critical values, we need something to compare them to, or a test statistic which is obtained from the actual sample of data we have. The test statistic requires that we have information and summary statistics about our sample. Mainly, you need the mean, the standard deviation, and the number of data points in the sample. So I took a sample of 36 miles, or 36 individual mile splits, and found the average and standard deviation in Excel. Before I can calculate the test statistic, I need to find the standard error value, which you will recall is found by dividing the given standard deviation by the square root of the sample size. In this case, the sample size is a nice even square resulting in 6. And when we do the division, I'm going to round this to three decimal places, 0 0.6, oh, 0 0.062. Now I can calculate my test statistic, or z value. And I do that by subtracting my sample mean from the claimed mean, or the mean that's in the hypothesis, and dividing by my standard error. Doing the subtraction, I have 0 0.03 over 0 0.062, which results in a value of 0 0.48. Keep that value in mind, because we're going to need it to make a decision, which is our last step. I find it easiest to make a decision using this little, little picture right here. I have a two-tailed hypothesis test, which means that I need to use the lower diagram. And I know for Z tests at a 5% alpha level or a significance level, the critical values are 1.96 and negative 1.96. Keep in mind, if you change the significance or alpha level, these critical values will change. I then consider this a number line, and I plot my test statistic on the number line. It's somewhere between the two. It's not important where, just that it falls between them. This is in the green region, which means I fail to reject the null hypothesis. Keeping in mind, the null hypothesis was that the average time per mile was equal to 8 minutes and 30 seconds. So my last step is to make my decision and clearly explain this choice. Because my test statistic was between the two critical values, the data supports the null hypothesis. Test statistics in the red region on those pictures support the alternative. The data supports the null hypothesis, but I also want to explain that in context of the problem. The average time per mile is eight and a half minutes. It's very important to explain it in the actual context of your problem so it's clear what choice you're making for your research question.